Thank you, Mike. And it's May 8th at 6.15 or so, and we've um, posted the agenda in three places and on the website and emailed interested parties so we can move forward um, with this meeting. And we have um, <clears throat> the prior meeting minutes from the April 10th select board meeting, and I found one correction when we were talking about um, adopting a lower speed limit for Bethel, um, from Bethel Mountain, from Middle Hollow Road to the Bethel Town Line. Um, we didn't adopt it then. We're gonna, we were just progressing to warn the, and start the process towards adopting it. So I'd make that one modification. But, um, and I didn't see any I other corrections. I, I didn't either. All right, I'm so I'd right move to approve those minutes. Second that. All in favor? All right. All right. Okay. And then we have the minutes from the April 24th meeting where I was not present, so I'll let you guys say whether or not you approve those. I have read these minutes over. They are accurate. And if Frank agrees with me. I second it. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. I wasn't there. Yeah. All right. Um, we had on the agenda um, the guests Bruce Marshall and Janine Ware. Are they online or not in the room? So I guess we'll table that for now and um, move on for a um, application for use of the town park. And this is um, for the recreational cycling event, the um, Vermont Grand Fondo. And this would be on 624 and from 10 to 6. And um, riders start in Bristol and ride through Rochester as part of a larger group. Um, you've gone through this before. I don't see any problem with them. Um, I'm using the town, the park. This is a park application. Yep. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Actually, no. This is for use of the Lions Club Park. They're not going to use the main park. So um, I move well, to the that. Lions Club. I Lions Club. second it. All in favor? All right. Aye. 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 All right. I have requested that John put a couple loads of crusher on that on that driveway. in that parking lot down there at the base because so it's, it's getting pretty somebody. clonded up. All right. So he'll get to it when he can, I guess. I'll remind him again to do it before this date would be good, I think. All right, so um, the next <coughs> item on the agenda is adopting. So we're, is this still, a, are we ready to adopt the amended ordinance now? We've warned it enough. This is the correction I was making to the minutes on the 10th. Yep. And so this is a notice of amendment of speed limit on Bethel Mountain Road ordinance. Um, so on May 10th, um, the select board of the town of Rochester, Vermont adopted or started the adoption process to amendments to the existing ordinance affecting the speed limit on a portion of Bethel Mountain Road pursuant to 24 BSA sections 1971 through 76. This notice is published pursuant to 24 BSA 1972 to inform the public of these amendments and of the citizens' right to petition for a vote to disapprove of these amendments, which we did not receive, did we? No, so people seem to... Um, so the full text of the ordinance may be examined at the Rochester Town Office at 67 School Street and during regular business hours. So this is that's what goes in the paper. This is a notice for the paper that's, that's going to go in there. into the paper. And actually, right. it says May 10th. Yeah. I'll change it to May 8th. May 8th, May 8th. okay. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think this is anything that we need to um, move to approve. We're just going to sign it so it's a proper thing to go in the paper. Yeah. Hello. May I ask you a question? Who is this, Robert? Yeah, how are you doing? Good, good. What's your question? Good. The question is, what, what's the actual status with the uh, V-Trans and the state 
with regards to the Bethel Mountain Road speed limit. Like we, you guys just put forth for that's um, it's huh? there. That's a, a town determined speed limit. So the V Trans is their, so their status is it's not their not their road. Well, that's what I was trying to put forth to Frank Severy and you guys and Mr. Bump. That's exactly what uh, Therese and Bethel experienced. All of a sudden, it's not their jurisdiction. Do you know, there, there, I, have to, I have to just share this with everyone. There are people that ride bicycles that exceed the 50 mile an hour speed limit on Bethel Mountain Road. Mm -hmm. So uh, you might want to think about that. Okay. But I, I, I did, I shared this in the last meeting regarding uh, changing, reducing speed limits in the state of Vermont is a, a, a big task. Yes, that's the process that we're, we're, um, we're in step two in, now. In the, we're on step two of that now, that the notice is going into the paper. So we're, we're aware of the, um, the, the process and, and doing it properly, it. yeah. So uh, with regards to Frank's concern about it, is there any, are there any minutes that he can share that uh, with uh, conversations regarding uh, VTrans, Mr. Bump, and the state and the town regarding what's actually going to happen, because I don't think the speed limit will be reduced by law. Uh, <laughs> in the conversations we've had with Chris Bump, or I've had with Chris Bump, is we have to go through the process. We did a traffic study on a year ago, and we go through the Regional Planning Commission on the process of lowering it, which is just basically we do the traffic study. They accept the traffic study as being done. And putting changing the speed limit on a road does not guarantee that people are going to drive that speed limit. It just guarantees that that is the limit posted. So that if there's law enforcement and somebody's going 60 miles an hour in a 40, they'll get a ticket. This was done to um, help with tr possibly alle alleviating some of the truck traffic that goes there. And that's the reason why we're doing this. Our car is gonna drive 40 miles an hour? Probably not, but that's not something that we can control. Every driver has the right to drive whatever speed they wanna go, they're gonna do it. There is a limit on what the law says they can do. We control the speed limit there, but there are ways that we have to go about getting it changed. It used to be 40 miles an hour years ago, and they upped it to 50 because some somebody complained that they wanted to commute to Randolph and they wanted to drive 50. And so they allowed it to happen in the past, but we're doing it so that to try to help alleviate some of the truck traffic that goes over that mountain. And that's why we're doing it. Will cars drive it? I doubt it. You know, that was something we talked about and Chris Bump and I talked about that too. So, you know, we're, we're just doing it. So hopefully the GPS people will put it in their, in their information where it may deter trucks from going over there. And that's really why we're doing it. Well, Frank, I totally respect what you just shared because uh, uh, all my neighbors along the Bethel Mountain Road uh, uh, the McIntyres, all of the, the, they're, you know, it's, it, it, it's, the intention is great, but I don't understand how uh, Dune mentioned that the uh, reduction of speed limit uh, has been, from what I understood or gleaned, is that the state has nothing to do with it. Is that my, is that correct or not? On the class two road, we have jurisdiction over it, but there's a process we have to follow in order to do what we're doing. We have to justify it for one, and the, and the real justification is our neighbor in Bethel, they have a 40 posted speed limit, and it's a conti continual road, so we feel that the 40 is a limit there, and all the powers that be agreed with us so that's why we're looking at it that way. 
Well, you know, that's a very logical uh, conversation. And by the way, I don't want to hold up the rest of the meeting. Uh, Dune might have to get home to dinner, but um, it's just, it's a discussion. Be Frank. <laughs> the uh, my stomach grumbling. Can you hear that from on the, the owl? But, um, Mine is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's proper for a select board member to sit back and laugh about con uh, serious concern about a town. And, um, and I, I, I'm going to just say I'm just going to say good evening. You say that okay. to you. You don't okay. vote. Good night. So. Good, good night. night. Thank you. Good. Okay. Um, where was I? Um, we have an application for a second class liquor license for Sandy's Seasons Books and Bakery LLC. So I'd move to approve that. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And this is, um, that didn't have to sign. And we have a bunch of applications for liquor licenses tonight. Number seven is. The same for the Village Grocery and Liquor Incorporated, which I believe is the new owners of the Max Market. So that's good news to everybody that that, that was a pretty quick Public transition from a closing store to an opening store. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'd gladly move to approve that. I gladly second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah, and I think they're going to um, try and turn that around. Um, Pretty quick, yeah. yeah. Pretty shortly, right? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay, and we also have um, approval for a second class. This is a yeah, tobacco, tobacco license, license for the Village Grocery and Liquor. A second. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And number number nine, we have another application for the use of the park. And this is for a, a library program for children about climate change. Appropriate to do it outside. And Maya New is doing that. And that would be on the 20th of this month, May, um, from 9 to 11. So I move to approve that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 on the agenda, but the state has extended um, licensing for liquor licenses right now that are trying to process everything through because of the, they're doing it all on portal now. Oh, yeah. So I added these two because they came in today. They came in today. All right. So they, um, this is an application for outside consumption permit for the Rochester Cafe, which I would Move to approve. My second. Now all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. And also from the same entity, uh, first class restaurant license from the cafe. And I would move to approve that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So is that new that they have a restaurant yes. license? I know we've done a lot of liquor licenses in the past. So now they're serving, uh, serving inside at the cafe. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That's a for, that's not yeah. that's a restaurant one. Yeah, yeah that's a restaurant. Yeah, I, I just don't know about their like what their hours are on that one. Okay. So we probably yeah. should check. All yeah, right, that's good. Excuse me, please. Um, yeah. What was the exact wording? It said restaurant license, but wasn't there another word with that or something? In an outdoor dining. In, this is um, basically just a, a first class. Um, restaurant license okay so first class restaurant so it was an outside consumption permit and a first class restaurant a license Correct. both for the cafe yep, yep. because they'll serve okay wine be they'll be able to yeah. serve beer and wine plus it's a, a health yeah. license yeah. for the, the serving food yes yep. okay and so there's three of them then nope just two no, just two, two yeah two the restaurant cafe. license is that that health license yeah okay thank okay. you yep Sorry to interrupt. I, I didn't quite hear. Thank you. No problem. No problem. The um, Tony from the library, have you got something to read for us? <laughs> something to read. We have uh, a trustees meeting tomorrow at 530. 
at the library. And just uh, sort of a reminder that uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks, the Great Decisions Program will, will start. That's been in the paper several times, but anyway. Fun, fun, fun. All right. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, Frank, you got anything um, you want to share from the highway? Uh, not too much. <coughs> so uh, had a street sweeper zooming around town today. Yep, what we had the up? had the street sweeper. He's done a bunch, quite a few roads. He's graded, and mm -hmm. I noticed already, which is good. Um, we're basically looking forward. He's kind of holding out for the grant application for class two on the Bethel Mountain Road, which we're hoping we get that so they could complete that work up there. And that's about it. He's back on to four day weeks, um, 10 hour days, the crew. Uh, and that's about it. That meeting Thursday. And we have it. Yes. Uh, thank you for reminding me that I had it written down here too. Um, yeah, there is a meeting on the bridge on the 11th. I've asked John to sit in with that. Mm -hmm. uh, we meet with the, the contractor and the... The West Hill Bridge. Yeah, yeah the, this is for the West Hill Bridge. Yep, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, and we'll meet with the contractor and the uh, Jason Keener, the, the designer, and also with uh, Brian Austin, the government. And they have chosen somebody to be there at all times. We have uh, put out feelers for doing the compaction testing as the town would take that on as our side of the project uh, to save a little money off the original bid, but we haven't really got the details on all that yet. So when we do, we'll bring that out, but the details are not there yet. So we'll wait on that. We're trying to save a little money and then Julie and I will be sitting down sometime after probably the middle, maybe a couple of weeks when she's frees up a little bit and, and I'm not quite so busy uh, to look for some funds to help alleviate some of the costs there for us. If we can find them, that'd be great. Yeah. Let's see, um, Terry's not here on the utilities, but um, Jeff, I see you're online as the energy coordinator. If you got any anything for us tonight? Uh, yes, good evening. Um, in two weeks, the energy committee is going to be coming back to the board um, to uh, request a location and a date. Um, actually, we're going to propose a date, but we will check with the uh, the town. Um, to see what is open, what dates are open, but we'll be looking for a location for an electric vehicle demonstration day, uh, either June or July, and we will want to uh, have a celebration of the uh, charging uh, facility in town as well. Yeah, we're so, still making. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're they're making progress on that. They poured the pad, the pedestal um, for it, and have some piping conduit ready. Um, and in talking with uh, GMP uh, today, they think they're gonna be uh, ready around uh, Labor Day. Um, so we'd like a little bit of time after that. And, uh, you know, ideally the park would be a uh, most visible location. Um, we could probably also do something at the old ball field too. Mm -hmm. But I'll look at conflicts and dates and we'll come back with uh, a specific request on that. Um, with the library, uh, I think we really need to push back um, to, with historical preservation so that uh, we can do the, the repair job properly. Um, I know I burdened you all with a very long email, um, bending my frustrations with that issue, but um, getting a working weather resistive barrier on the building is the only way to, to uh, take care of it long term. Um, and then uh, the other thing that I bring up to the board is that the uh, Energy Committee is going to collaborate or is collaborating with Randolph and with Bethel on what's called window dressers. Uh, window dressers are um, 
It's a nonprofit out of Maine that helps communities offer low income and people with no incomes, uh, municipalities and businesses with um, inexpensive interior storm inserts that will add two more layers of uh, wind protection and a small amount of insulation. Um, and uh, we, I will make sure that we measure the town buildings and, sh and give you the option as to uh, going ahead and doing that with uh, town facilities that uh, could benefit from it. Well, that's that's what's uh, perking now. So those window insert sets, we're going to be looking at it for town buildings, but that's something that's just open to the general public too, I presume? Yes, yeah. yes. We are going to try to recruit people in, through the five towns of the Route 100 Valley um, here. Uh, we will be talking to all of the um, municipalities uh, and also uh, working through the food shelf to get to folks that uh, have needs there um, with uh, uh, low income um, installations. They can be done for free, provided that someone, either the recipient or someone for the recipient, helps in the volunteer side of things with the actual build. And the actual build is going to be in Bethel. They've got the best facility for it. So are these openable at all, or are they just uh, something you put in in the winter that seals your win window shut? There, there's something you insert from the inside in the winter, and then you just pull them back out. They're friction fit with a gasket material, and you pull them out when it's ready to open windows. Plexiglass or something? No, it, it's a, a pine frame. It can be painted white, um, and it's a, there's a, uh, oh, I'm blanking on the, on the, plastic type, but it's the plastic type that you see meat packages wrapped in or vegetables in so that you can really see very clearly through it. It's not a six mil cloudy kind of plastic thing. Okay, so plastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it wraps the frame so that you wind up with two layers. Okay. Um, Interesting. Well, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I see Kristen's not here. Do we have any grant update info from her? Not tonight. Um, just one thing on the energy. The EV chargers are down there. Uh, they've installed two uh, separate uh, EV chargers. They're both level three, which is the rapid charge, and that's what they're putting in. They were originally going to put a level two and a, and a level three, but it's more expensive to put the level two in than it is to put the level three in. So, so, the so three, they just yeah. put two level threes down there and they're hoping that either this week or next week they'll be operational. Yeah. So they're, they're moving on with that. Yeah. They finally got everything together and cool. talking with a guy today, he was figured they'd be set. They're hoping to have it done this week, but you know, depend on when the power company can energize it and get all the inspections done and the testing. And so they'll, there's still a little work to do, so but we'll it'll get, be within a couple of weeks. You get on the map. Yep. Yeah. And it's good. I mean, level, uh, the, the DC fast chargers, the level three chargers are really more appropriate for that location um, than, than level two chargers. Uh, level two chargers, uh, uh, <laughs> What we would see, it would be seeing the electric vehicle that can't make its uh, distance by range parked during the day charging while they ride a less efficient vehicle to Boston for their meeting. Um, you know, so it, it, if anything was going to change, the change having more fast chargers rather than medium chargers is better for that place. Yeah. Jeff, can I ask a question? Do you know if these chargers charge all electric vehicles, including Teslas? Uh, no. No. Um, I suspect that they are going to um, have a, a CCS charging, um, and the Teslas have adapters that can be utilized. Um, the ad adapters are, are rapidly becoming um, a solution for... Okay what kind of charging type you have. But this is a GMP project, not a not specifically a Rochester project. So they're 
making that kind of determination as to what, what plug they're putting in. Um, excuse me, could I ask you a question, Jeff? Um, this You're planning to have this demonstration coming up, uh, demonstration day in June or July for the electric vehicle charging station, you said. But you talked about having the dem demonstration maybe on the park. But where exactly is the sta charging station? Um, that's Is that down on the Lions Club Park or where is that going to be? At the park and ride. Across At the, the park and ride across from the Lions Club Park mm -hmm. would be a good way to say it. Yeah. Excuse me? It's across from the fire station. Okay, across from the fire station. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. No problem. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, we have some um, folks in. Rob, you came in to give us a little update on mm -hmm. your research. What, what have you got for us? So uh, I went, I guess a week and a half, two weeks ago, I went to my first meeting of the Granville uh, First Responders Board. Uh, Rochester and Hancock recently had board members added to that, and I'm the Rochester guy. And uh, something came out of that, which I think is pretty interesting, and uh, this will be the first public announcement of the project, although it's just the beginning of the project. Um, Dan Sargent, who's a, who's a captain of both the Granville Fire Department and the uh, Granville First Responders, was at the meeting together with Matthew Parrish, who's the administrator of WERVA, the White River, Valley Ambulance people. Uh, Charles Piso is a training officer there. And uh, Theodore Smith, Ted Smith, mm -hmm. uh, who's a captain at the Granville Fire Department. So anyway, most of the discussion uh, was about the um, a plan to establish a, a working transport ambulance on this side of the mountain that would work in coordination with uh, ORVA even to and including meeting them halfway, by whatever means people could be transported from this side of the valley uh, over to, to the hospital uh, in Randolph fastest. Uh, as most people know, there used to be a, a service like this here in the past. Uh, his feeling was that right now, the Granville first responders have most of the hardware that you would put in an ambulance. Uh, they have a number of drivers who could drive the ambulance. And they're thinking to get a new truck, and they're thinking that instead of getting a similar sort of crash truck like they have now, they would get a, an ambulance capable of transport uh, and then fill up whatever the missing holes in the equipment were. But that's, and, and he thinks that's not a big deal. That the, basically, the hardware, even the ambulance, a used ambulance, uh, the big deal is the people, the personnel, the volunteers who would, who would staff this. Um, and he thinks, and the Werva guys thought, this was probably a two-year process to get to the point where such a service would be in place. Mm -hmm. um, the, the costs that would be involved, they don't know yet because they really don't have a budget. Uh, the one thing that was mentioned was a concern over bylaws that are either uh, Rochester Fire Department bylaws or town bylaws. I'm not sure which, but they restrict uh, firemen working in two different towns. And there's a lot of pretty reasonable reasons to restrict that. You know, people show up from a fire, and they're from, you know, what, 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 who do you take orders from? What's your job? So there's reasons uh, that I understand for the fire department thing. His point is that the Granville first responders, even though they are part of the Granville Fire Department, they're separate, financially separate, and separate administratively, as much as you can be in a tiny, you know, outfit like that. So he would hope that uh, in order to help with this, with the problem of personnel, that this bylaw could be re-examined and maybe you could break loose some people from, because uh, it's a small valley, from, from uh, our town to, to work over with those guys too. The assumption is that they would house the ambulance there in Granville. Um, training is a big deal. Um, and of course the number of bodies. But actually the, the number of people I have there as volunteers has gone up. I think yes, up to 20. 20. 20 now, yeah, which is really good. good. So th this is not, a, this is the beginning of something. And, and, and there's a lot of, you could argue in many ways whether or not it's really worth whatever it's going to be to have an ambulance on this side of the valley. It's a volunteer service just like the fire department, so they don't, you know, they're not there all the time. Although, depending on the number of people you had, you could staff it, you know, you could staff it up. Um, but there, there are costs associated with it. There would, be, there would be costs associated with it, there's no doubt about it. How those costs would be paid for, who would pay for them, 
you know, we don't know yet. This is something that Dan, I think, has put a lot of research, a lot of, of work into it, and all, and the folks from uh, Wervo were pretty positive about it. I think they were cautiously positive, because it's not easy to do this. I mean, yeah. we know we had one here before. But it would mean you, you would, for, for, for somebody that had a, a health crisis or an automobile accident or something on this side of the valley uh, that was really critical and you really needed that time. And I've been in a situation in my life where I barely made it to the emergency room. So it's not a joke when you're the guy in the ambulance, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, I won't go on. Uh, Martha, if you have any further questions, you can send me an email or something. Uh, but this is the first kind of public announcement of the intention to do this. And that's... The end of my presentation. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you taking on that, um, that good. correspondence sure. and working with them. Oops. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. cool. um, Susie, did you have something that you wanted to talk about? Uh, yeah, I just have a couple, a couple of questions. I was hoping Terry was going to be here because I've spoken with him in the past. Um, <clears throat> there, there's water coming into my basement. And um, all through the drought, it, it continued. And uh, Terry did come in, and he had some kind of testing device that he said um, would pick up water flow in the pipe. Um, and he didn't pick up any, but he said that he was going to, and I'll follow up with Terry, um, but I just want to preface this, um, with so somebody who has more advanced equipment that would come in and see if there's leakage somewhere. If it's a leak from Be the town system. I've had, I've had three different contractors strongly urge me to contact the town as to whether or not that that's the problem. In the southwest corner of my basement, I went down there just before I came over, the soil is so wet that you pick it up and squeeze it and, and the moisture comes out. There's no runoff from the road. The only runoff that my house has is from my roof. Um, and as I said, it's been wet for the last 20 years that I've been there. So um, my, one of my questions is, how, you know, I, I, as I said, I'll talk to Terry to see if um, he can, we can revisit this and he can get in touch with whoever it was he was thinking of getting in touch with. And then, where does the responsibility fall in terms of, of of figuring it out? I mean, I I don't know what I don't know what to do other than talking to Terry, and now I'm here talking to you about it because it's seeming more and more like that's what's going on um, because there's no place else for the water to be coming from. Well, it could be an underground spring yeah. too. I mean, we have that issue right down by the town garage. If you drive down to go over the bridge to Riverbrook Just Farm, running. there, right in the middle of the road, there's a running stream that comes out of there in the spring, and no one knows where it's coming from. It's just from the ground. Um, but it, can that be determined somehow? Yeah. Well, I would think that for Terry's point of view, we just look and see if there's any leakage anywhere, as far as if we can detect any leakage from our system. And, and alleviate that issue, but I would say it's probably just a ground thing and everything basement -y. you call Mike there or whatever it is. Oh, yeah, no, I yeah. understand. I understand that. It's just no, that I, if I don't know what else. Because it's 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 really wet where the water where the water water comes in and then where the sewage pipe comes in, that area is wet as well. It it so. may be just tracking the pipes into your house too. That could be the you know, water runs along the pipes yeah it would flow follow the pipe because it's just a natural occurrence that it would have a channel would make a channel where your pipe is okay that's a that's a normal thing but if there's leakage there they should be able to detect that yeah if it has the, the people with the more sophisticated equipment to yeah. to right. hear right. make it hear eliminate it or water. diagnose it okay i have three uh, some pumps in the hardware that tend to work not 24-7, uh, but year-round they kick in when we have, there's a lot of roof on the hardware, yeah. and when we have heavy rains, we will get water into the basement of the hardware because we have 
basically a stone foundation underneath that mm -hmm. hardware. So uh -huh. water finds its way in. We have three sump pumps in the basement that right. they'll kick on in August <laughs> if we get enough rain. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so just get back in touch with Terry and he can he can yeah. just do whatever needs to be done and he'll communicate with you guys or yeah we can follow up with that too I mean we okay. can talk to Terry about it see where he stands and, okay. and then go from there because if we'll they do bring this better equipment in I think they should really take a close look down by the town garage too because it's <laughs> like it's like it's just well, like a, a stream idea. running out of it yeah it comes right out of the middle of the road yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> But it yeah. dries up, I guess, during the summer. I yeah. don't yeah. ever remember seeing it, but so, boy, it runs right down the road. So my, my last question is, is that where the, where the water, the main water pipe comes in from the road into the basement, mm -hmm. it's like a cave kind of thing, like there's no wall there? Um, was that the builder, the original builders, or when the water, came, when the water comes in, who does that? So the homeowner or the town? or? Should I concrete that closed? I mean, is it a is stone foundation or is it you poured concrete? It's in that? concrete. It's concrete. The whole foundation is concrete. Yeah. So that they would probably made a little wooden form over where those lines are going to come in, and then over time that wood might have rotted away, you know, to to, to leave an opening to, to put the pipes, you know. But it shouldn't be a big opening. It's a big opening. It's a big opening. I don't know. I mean, is it? It, but it's concrete that's fallen away? I believe so. I mean, I don't know if there was anything there ever uh, because yeah. I, you know, I wasn't Terry around. Yeah, yeah, Terry can elaborate on that. Yeah, Terry can diagnose that. Okay, all right. All right, I mean, yeah, I'm just trying to gather information. Yes, I to yes. Move before him taking a look at it. Yeah, again, okay. Yeah. I'll track him down. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really curious though if your kitty's still outside waiting for you. I hope, I hope so. <laughs> That's okay. All right. Um, you got anyone back. online that has anything they'd like to talk about tonight? No. Nope. Just the other thing we have the park uh, trees. We did acquire that grant for uh, 5000 with a matching side of it for another five so making it a ten thousand dollar enterprise for us we uh nancy lois and myself took a trip to moncton to look at the trees and we purchased six trees with the grant um, they're all uh, two and a half to three inches in diameter i don't do you have the the type of trees they are do you um, One's a sycamore, I remember. A maple, a sycamore, and a hornbeam. A hornbeam, okay. And and they all will be wanting to put those in the ground within a couple of weeks. Um, I'd like to do it by the end of next week uh, before they get solidly leaved out. Uh, it's recommended that we do that. And I think Doug Duval is going to be. He'll in, be here this weekend, and he can sort of look at how to cite them the placement we're we're thinking probably from bethel mountain road over through towards nancy's house would be the first set because these are to replace those ash trees yeah, that are yeah. that are apt to be dead within three or four to five years mm -hmm. so um these were recommended by the the arborist up there the owner of the, the, owner of nursery. the, the, the nursery which is a wholesale outlet it's mm -hmm. not they're not open to retail, but um, this is really an interesting little trip we took there. And great. So we'll be looking for volunteers with some machinery and mm -hmm. try to get the holes dug and, and the trees planted. And then after that, we'd like to, before the end of the month, before Memorial Day, uh, we would like to uh, uh, put mulch around all the other trees that are on the mm -hmm. park. We've uh, range to get the purchase of, of whatever yardage of material we need, but we'll be looking to get some volunteers together to just, you know, come up for a day and do some shoveling, and we'll get a few people with equipment that can run the mulch back and forth and just, you know, spruce it up a little bit to keep the mowers away from the base of the trees and try to protect that a little bit. Yeah. And cool. the mulch will probably last maybe two years at the yeah. most, but you know, it'll at least help alleviate, and then maybe in the future we can look to 
maybe up it a little bit more. We won't have to put so much mulch, but just enhance it a little bit. Whether we do it ourselves or, yeah. or contract it out will be a lot less. So, um, but well, maybe when they they come through, um, trimming around power lines, and they are looking for, we could. Um, that stuff is usually pretty gnarly. Pretty gnarly. <laughs> yeah, pretty it's got all kinds of stuff in okay. it, so yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest at, that. We're looking at a dark mix that Colton can provide to okay. us. Um, excuse me, Frank, um, you were looking for volunteers to help with the, the work planting the trees and doing the mulch and everything. Should I mention that if someone wants to volunteer, should they call the town office? Should they call you How, or, or should they just show up? Or do you have a date and time or? Yes, uh, if they're interested in helping in it with any of that, they can give their name to Julie at the town office and we'll keep a list and and then we'll let them know. They can leave their email address or we can or their phone number and we can let them know what our time frame is, what exact times we have. So we haven't established those yet. I think we're just waiting to, to kind of. And then we'll have to have maintenance in the summer months too. They're going to require watering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where will the water? Is there? Okay, thank you. Where would the water come from? Is there a? No, oh, the, the fire hydrant. Or? We'll get big tanks and. Well, you won't need a big tank. There's yeah. only six trees, so yeah. whatever. If you use and a we'll five-gallon pail per tree once every three days or whatever they oh. recommend we do. I've got a little 65 gallon tank that I use for my sap in the spring and you, it can be used yeah. for this during the summer and it can go in a little trailer and oh, okay. we can go right out and, and hitch it on a lawnmower and then just mm -hmm. feed it that way. Oh, that's exciting. So are, are you going to leave the ash trees or have them? They're, we're going to see how they survive. I mean, there, there's no telling that they'll actually die. We don't know. Um, it was recommended by the, the natural resources group and the parks and rec people that said these trees are just the type that the ash borer will get because they're in the open and they're susceptible to that. So we're just trying to do a, a pre-planting so that we, if we do have to lose them, we've got something in place going forward and if they survive there, there's still enough room for them yeah that's what we're yeah. that's what we're trying to yeah. figure out where we should plant them without taking up all the open space either right. you know we one of the problems is they are all the same species and so if something happens right. we yeah. potentially will lose all of those ash trees so once one gets it the rest of them right. will yeah. go go like dominoes so we've got six that we bought this year and starting from the Bethel Mountain Road makes more sense going towards Park Row because there's less trees there. There's more competition that if we go down towards the, the uh, park house. Mm -hmm. There's uh, the trees, there's more trees there that are closer so yeah. we may not have to mm -hmm. put so many in reserve. But oh, that's exciting. That's and all the, all the big trees are ash trees? That's all from there. No, all no just on the, the outside. The Huntington House yeah. and coming down um, Park, Park Row. Yeah. Those are all ash, green ash. So most of them. All of them all are green ash. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's two old. 50 years down ago the when they planted Park them, House. that's what they did. Yeah. They don't recommend planting um, oh, like that any, mm -hmm. any yeah. longer, yeah. not one species. Yeah. 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 So, and then they, they also looked at all the trees, the natural resources, inventory dollar trees that are there. There's 49 that are there. And, and we have and, the condition of every one of those trees. Yeah. So they were really helpful and they were uh, good with the grant as far as they helped us get through that part of it. And they were really excited that we were taking a step forward and trying to preserve that area. Even the arborist said, you know, I come down here and sometimes I just want to go over and sit on the on the park house porch, he said, because I think I want to go there when, when I get old and graze as I love looking at that park. So he comes over from Moncton and passes through here on occasion. So he's familiar with our park, and, which is nice to hear, you know, yeah. it's a good, good thing to hear. All right, Tony. About, I don't know, a year or so ago, some guy was here talking about giving 
trees to the town? Yeah, Ben, oh, ben, ben Falk. Falk. Yeah. Did that happen? It, he planted he, some he down planted at the um, Lions, Lions, Lions Club. Club oh, Park. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it was, they had a workshop going and had a group of volunteers there to plant some. So. Along the river there, on the edge of the, yeah, on the edge of the river there, yeah. because we we lo they lost a big butternut and I think yeah. a couple other trees up there, so we had them put a bunch up there. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, we don't want any more oak trees on the park. No, <laughs> we'd like to get rid of the ones that are there. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're nasty. <laughs> All right. Um, if no one has anything else they'd like to talk about, I'd move to adjourn. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yep.